All right, so two days of training worth, two days worth of training to discuss <laughs> today, um, and since as of three days ago, I added in the two extra reps at the beginning. So the the rep with the with the working weight that I'm going to use, and the rep of the he heavier single at 105 percent. And on these second two days, I've been working at 365. I have that heavier single, which is just shown at 385 and then uh, back offs at 365. So on the second day, uh, that's the first day that I'll notice the effects of these, this kind of thing. I felt like kind of did not feel that great, honestly. And that's the day that's shown here. Uh, so this is, this is yesterday's training. Uh, yeah, I was not like all too amped. <laughs> Mentally going in was a little bit rough. Uh, just all in all, like, yeah, you see that third rep so I did two, I did two sets of three with 365. Like, was not buttery. I, I'll just put it at that. Uh, it's just not. It just wasn't wasn't buttery. wasn't juicy. wasn't thick. None of those good stuff. Um. And yeah, part of it was just like the feeling. Like, man, these weights are heavy. Uh, everything's ramping up. Just kind of hard to keep up sometimes. But uh, overall, like the weight, it moved okay. I guess. Like I got all the reps, things were things were good enough. Um, but yeah, on the second day, I was kind of thinking to myself, man, is this the way adding these reps? Maybe I went in the wrong direction. Um, yeah. So that's kind of my thought going in, like thinking, okay, I'll I'll get my work in tomorrow. Uh, I'll see how that feels, and then I'll kind of evaluate, continue to evaluate at that point. If if it turns out that I'm wrong and, I, and I'm going in the wrong direction. Uh, I explained a bunch in the previous video about how I plan to increase work so I can like create a new adaptation to the increased amount of work. If I'm wrong about that and it's just too much that for my body to handle, that's fine too. I'll just go. I'll just correct. Like it's it's not a big deal. Uh, the great thing about squatting every day is like if you if you're wrong, you just if you learn something, you just correct and like. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to waste too much time like learning any particular task. So I finally did some normal bench press. I've been doing feet up close grip bench press. Uh, and I decided I'm going to finally move back into normal bench press because my shoulders were a little beat up from the feet up and the stability and all these, the, the range of motion, all these things. I actually think now that it was more due to all the, all the low bar squatting and the rack position. Um, but yeah, I did the pull-ups and the bench press. Both of those were good after the squat. I had to take a minute to rest. But yeah, here's here's today's squats. So 365 actually moves well here. I actually did feel better today. Uh, not all the way better. I still feel kind of beat up. But it was better than the day before. And then 385. It was a little bit of a stubborn weight. It was a little bit slow, but it came up. Um... Or slow for me at least. Like I have, I have definitely more in the tank there, but like, just how it felt on my back and everything. Uh, yeah. And here is my first triple. The second rep here, you're about to see. The second rep was just terrible. Like I, I, I don't know exactly what happened, but I think it was a combination of losing tightness and falling off balance. Uh, but I was able to correct it for the third rep. And so this third rep actually moved better than the third rep of the previous day. So it leads me to believe I could have done the set of four that uh, would have been the progress I was aiming for. So set of three yesterday, set of four today. I think it could have happened had I not made that mistake. Uh, once I made that mistake, I was already iffy about going to four reps. I figured I would decide mid-set. Uh, once I made that mistake, I knew I should not go for four reps. Um, so I didn't, and then I did, so I did the same squat workout two days in a row. We'll see if I do it again tomorrow, if it feels better. I'm trying to pay attention to that feeling. Uh, did Just did some body weight pull-ups today, because my biceps were pretty beat up from all the pull-ups as well. So I decided not to push it, but I did purchase these rings, so I could get a nice stretch on my shoulders, and, uh, do, and uh, eventually attempt to do some dips. Um... So I consider this kind of thing like kind of long range of motion mobility type of thing. I think the the most effective thing that I've done 
to mobilize any part of my body has been to strengthen it and end range, ranges of motion. So if you see me do RDLs, which I'm going to do after this, my RDL has a very long range of motion. I'm basically nearly doing strict straight leg deadlifts uh, from a deficit, basically. But yeah, you might think that like that that range of motion on the RDL comes from flexible hamstrings. But it really just comes from progressively strengthening deeper ranges of motion in the RDL. I wasn't initially able to do this, and I just tried to maximize my range of motion, tried to work on that movement, and just slowly over time, I was reaching down further to the point where I needed a board to prevent myself from actually touching the floor. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here as well, is just like I've noticed I have some shoulder tightness, particularly in my front deltoid, and also some in my uh, external rotator muscles. Uh, and the way I plan to free that up is to just strengthen that range of motion. I, I never found stretching to be that effective. Uh, rolling things out has been somewhat effective, but it's been like extremely temporary. Uh, whereas I've found some permanence in just like working on those range of motions and like getting stronger in those particular ranges. Uh, the, one, the, the best example is the RDL. Uh, you'll see my range of motion in the RDL coming up, but I've also done this in the deep squat as well. I realized I had some quad tightness that was what, what was like mainly contributing to to my knee pain because if your quads are tight, then they'll pull on your knee tendons, and if your knee tendons are being pulled on, they're being stretched out. Uh, they're they're weaker because they're more compromised. Like imagine if you pull a rubber band. Uh, it's going to be weaker because it's like stretched out and it's in, just in like a weaker spot overall. So that's kind of the idea here is to loosen these things up by increasing range of motion. So that's why I'm doing kind of like deep push-ups and deep dips on the rings. And uh, I'll try to experiment with strengthening that, see if that helps. And if it doesn't, then... I'm probably still going to do dips because I think they're a fantastic movement anyway. So it's not such a big deal. The rings will also help with stability too. Um, number of benefits from using the rings for sure. Yeah, so you see my RDL. I stand on a board because if I don't, then I go deep enough to the point where I literally touch the bar to the ground or I touch the plates to the ground. Uh, I don't want to be doing that in my RDL. I want to be able to control the change in direction with my with my hamstrings completely and not use assistance from the ground. And yeah, that's basically it. That's the past two days of training.